children, come, gather round, for the Queen of Alredia has two tales to tell, one to make you weep and the other to help you sleep. We begin with The Wonderful Musician by the Brothers Grimm. It should be a classic, right? Because the Brothers Grimm were masterful storytellers, or so we're told. Let's see for ourselves, shall we? There was once a wonderful musician traveling alone through a forest and thinking all manner of things until there was nothing left for him to think about. Time passes so slowly for me when I am all alone in the forest, he sighed. I must find a good companion. Then he removed his fiddle from his pack and began playing until beautiful music filled the forest and echoed through the trees, and it was not long before a wolf came trotting through the thicket. A wolf, said the musician. I have no desire for his company. But the wolf came near and said to the musician, Dear musician, how beautifully you play. I would like to learn to do that too. It is easily learned, the musician replied. You have only to do exactly as I instruct you. Oh, musician, said the wolf, I will obey you as any good scholar obeys his master. Follow me, then, said the musician. And when they had gone a short way together, they came upon an old oak tree which had a deep cleft in its trunk. Look there, said the musician. If you truly wish to learn how to play the fiddle, you must put both of your forepaws into that crevice. The wolf obeyed immediately. The musician picked up a stone, and with one quick blow he had wedged the wolf's two front paws so tightly into the crack that he was now a prisoner. Wait there until I come back for you, said the musician, and he continued on his way. After a while he found himself thinking, Time passes so slowly for me when I am all alone in the forest. I must find another companion. He removed his fiddle from his pack and began playing until beautiful music filled the forest and echoed through the trees, and it wasn't long before a fox came creeping through the underbrush. <laughs> a fox, said the musician. I have no desire for his company. But the fox came near and said, Dear musician, how beautifully you play. I would like to learn to do that too. It is easily learned, the musician replied. You have only to do exactly as I instruct you. Oh, musician, said the fox, I will obey you as all good scholars obey their masters. Follow me then, said the musician. And when they had gone a short way together, they came to a footpath with high bushes lining both sides. The musician grabbed what looked to be the strongest limb of a bush growing directly to his right on the path. He bent it down to the ground and held it there beneath his right foot. He then bent to the ground the strongest limb to his left and said, Now, little fox, if you truly wish to learn how to play the fiddle, you must give me your left front paw. The little fox obeyed, and the musician fastened the little fox's front left paw to the bow underneath his left foot. And now, little fox, said the musician, if you truly wish to learn how to play the fiddle, you must give me your right front paw. Once again, the little fox obeyed, and the musician tied his front right paw to the bow beneath his right foot. He examined both knots carefully to be sure they'd hold firm, and then he let go. The limbs snapped back to their full height, carrying the little fox with them so that he now struggled helplessly in the air. Wait there until I come back for you, said the musician, and he continued on his way. Soon he was again thinking, time passes so slowly for me when I am all alone in the forest. I really must find another companion. And again he removed his fiddle from his pack and began playing until beautiful music filled the forest and echoed through the trees, and it wasn't long before a little bunny rabbit came springing happily toward him. A bunny rabbit, said the musician. 
I have no desire for his company. But the rabbit came near and said, Dear musician, how beautifully you play. Oh, would I like to learn to do that too. It is easily learned, the musician replied. You have only to do exactly as I instruct you. Oh, musician, said the bunny rabbit, I will obey you as a good scholar obeys his master. Follow me, then, said the musician. And when they had gone a short way together, they came to an open space in the forest where stood an aspen tree. There the musician tied a long string around the little bunny's neck, and the other end he fastened to the tree. Now, little bunny, said the musician, if you truly wish to learn how to play the fiddle, you must run twenty times round this tree as quickly as you can. Hop like a bunny. The little bunny obeyed, of course, but running twenty times round the tree, it soon twisted the string twenty times round its trunk, and little bunny was ensnared. Every pull and tug only caused the string to cut into his tender little neck, so he lay perfectly still. Wait there until I come back for you, said the musician, and he continued on his way. The wolf, in the meantime, had been pushing and pulling and biting at the stone which trapped him. He worked until he was freed, and then, filled with anger and rage, he hurried after the musician, vowing to tear him to pieces. When the little fox saw the wolf running toward him on the path, he cried, Brother wolf, please help! The musician has betrayed me! The wolf quickly drew down the tree limbs, bit through the knots which bound the little fox, and they set off together, vowing revenge upon the musician. Soon they stumbled upon the little bunny rabbit, whom likewise they delivered, and then all three set off to face their enemy together. The musician by this time had once more lamented his loneliness, and once more he removed the fiddle from his pack, playing until beautiful music filled the forest, and echoed through the trees. This fourth time proved more fortunate for him. His music reached the ears of a poor woodcutter who instantly put down his hatchet and followed the sound of the musician's fiddling. At last comes the right companion, declared the musician. I was seeking a human being, not a beast. The musician continued playing, and the poor woodcutter stood listening as if bewitched, his heart leaping with gladness. But as he thus stood, the wolf, the fox, and the rabbit came upon them, and the woodcutter knew well that they had some evil design. So he raised his glittering axe and placed himself before the musician as if to say, Whomsoever wishes to harm him, let him beware, for he shall have to deal with me. The beasts were so terrified they ran back into the forest. The musician, out of gratitude, played once more for the poor woodcutter, and then continued on his way. The end. <laughs> Seriously, the end. As in, uh, that's all, folks. So, kids, correct me if I'm wrong, to yourselves, of course, but I think there are a few things upon which we can all agree. First and foremost, I would assume we are agreed that the Brothers Grimm were a couple of psychopaths, correct? Secondly, there can be no question but that there's also something very wrong with people who would read such a story, let alone read such a story to children at any time, but especially at bedtime. So, lastly, one really must question the storytelling in general. Forget about the ridiculously twisted tale. You call that an ending? That the Brothers Grimm were published at all? Were we adults? I'd have a different question, but for the children, I ask, whose cow were they towing? Were I their mother, this story would have been a clue that these boys needed both an editor and to be immediately removed from polite society, after which their every move would have been retraced in search of the bodies. So let's try this again, shall we? The Wonderful Musician as Mother's Grimm Long ago and far away, a wonderful musician traveled alone through a forest thinking all manner of things. 
as there is always more than enough food for thought, it was quite a long while before he found himself thinking, Time passes very slowly for me all alone in the forest. If I must travel alone, so be it, but it would be nice to have a companion. Then he removed his fiddle from his pack and began playing until beautiful music filled the forest and echoed through the trees. It wasn't long before a wolf came trotting through a thicket. A wolf, said the musician. I was not expecting a wolf. But life is always full of surprises, so perhaps the only real surprise is that I continue to be surprised. The wolf came near and said to the musician, Dear musician, how beautifully you play. I would like to learn to do that too. It's easily learned if one has fingers and opposable thumbs, the musician replied. Most unfortunately, you have only paws, but I think you could learn to play the drum. My music would only be better for having someone to keep the beat. Oh, wise musician, said the wolf, I would like to play the drum, and if you would but teach me, I will pay very close attention indeed. Follow me, then, said the musician, and when they had gone a short way together, they came upon an old tree stump which had hollowed. Look there, said the musician, if you truly wish to play the drum, we must first cut the top off that hollow tree trunk. Then we shall take a piece from the bottom of my coat and stretch the leather tightly over the open ends, affixing it with twine. Both the drum and your paws shall be your instruments. In very short order they had made a drum, and the musician had given the wolf a quick lesson. Why, I do believe you were born to beat the drum, said the musician. Now we shall play duets and they continued on their merry way, making music all the day. But after a while they found themselves thinking, Hmm, the music is so much more beautiful when there are two of us. Just imagine if we had a third. We must find another companion. They soon discovered a clearing where they began playing until the sound of the fiddle and the drum filled the forest and echoed through the trees and it wasn't long before a fox came creeping through the underbrush. A, a fox, said the musician. We were not expecting a fox, but life is always full of surprises, so perhaps the only real surprise is that we continue to be surprised. The fox came near and said to the musicians, for now there were two, ah, how beautifully you both play. I would like to learn to do that too. The fiddle is easily learned if one has fingers and opposable thumbs, and drums are fine for those with paws, the fiddler replied. But you are a wily fox, and I just happen to have a harmonica. Our music would only be better for the addition of a harmonica. Oh, wise fiddler, said the fox, I would like to play the harmonica, and if you would but teach me, I will pay very close attention indeed. The fiddler gave his harmonica and a quick lesson to the wily fox. Why, I do believe you were born to play the harmonica, said he, and now we have a trio. Then they continued on their merry way, making music all the day, until they found themselves thinking. The music is so much more beautiful when there are three of us. Just imagine if we had a fourth. We must find another companion. And soon they discovered a clearing where they began playing until the sound of the fiddle and the drum and the harmonica filled the forest and echoed through the trees. Suddenly a little bunny came springing happily toward them. A bunny rabbit, exclaimed the fiddler. We were not expecting a bunny rabbit. But life is always full of surprises, so perhaps the only real surprise is that we continue to be surprised. The bunny came near and said to the musicians, Ah, how beautifully you three play. I would like to learn to do that too. You're in luck, little bunny, the fiddler exclaimed, for your overbite is perfect for the jug, and it just so happens that I have one in my pack. 
our music would only be better for the addition of a jug. Oh, wise fiddler, said the little bunny rabbit, I would like to play the jug, and if you would but teach me, I will pay very close attention indeed. The fiddler gave his jug and a quick lesson to the little rabbit, and then he said, Why, I do believe you were born to play the jug, and now we have a quartet. And they continued on their merry way, making music all the day. The wolf, having played his drum for several days, was overjoyed by the difference music had already made in his life. He vowed never to stop and always to be thankful for having met the fiddler. The fox and the rabbit felt similarly, and the fiddler was equally happy with his lot. Everyone needs to go solo sometimes, he thought, but true harmony among companions is also a boon. The fiddler was by this time anything but lonely, and once more they continued on their merry way, making beautiful music all the live-long day. This time their music reached the ears of a poor woodcutter, who instantly put down his hatchet, followed the sound, and was soon seen approaching. "'Are you kidding me?' cried the fiddler. "'I'd given up hope of ever finding a human companion.' But life is always full of surprises, so perhaps the only real surprise is that I continue to be surprised. The woodcutter came near and said to the musicians, Ah, how beautifully you four play. I would like to learn to do that too. I thought you'd never ask, woodcutter, and I see that you have an axe. I'd leave it at that, but how many kids know that axe is slang for guitar? More's the pity. <laughs> so I'm betting you have a saw. Yes, kids, people really play saws. Our music would only be better for the addition of a saw. But let's be honest. I love music as much as the next guy. However, I can't help thinking that a quintet with a wolf on drum, a fox on harmonica, a bunny on jug, me on the fiddle and you on the saw would surely mean the end of poverty for us all. Oh, dear fiddler, said the other four in unison, you're not just wise, you're a freaking genius. The fiddler blushed, then smiled and said, Why, I do believe we were born a little late for vaudeville, but they'll love us on the Vegas Strip. And they continued on their merry way, making music all the day. Approached by agents from L.A., they shrieked, Botox and caps? No way! We may look strange, but we're okay. Happy just because we play, and there are always those who will pay to hear the beasts and humans, eh? That was written shortly after they toured Canada. The end. The end. Sleep tight, children. Sweet dreams.